Hi everyone, Anat Kester here with a new video tutorial and today I'm going to show you some really easy and cool watercolor techniques to do in your art journal. So I'm working on my art journal with a wet brush. The page is dry and I'm just going to wet my brush and then pick up some color and what I want to do is apply the watercolor in a circular motion like this and I'm using different shades of blue because I want to make clouds. This is going to be a art journal page with basically clouds and rain so I'm going to show you how to do this. So when you apply your watercolor in a circular motion, you get the illusion of more depth in layering. And this will give you the look of clouds because the circular motion basically creates the shadows that you see in the sky when the sun hides behind the clouds because when you use a circular motion like this like I'm doing now then the water color doesn't get applied in an even way so these shades that are created is what you want so you see the different colors create a really beautiful sky so now I'm just going to wet the paper and let my watercolor run along the paper. You need quite a bit of water to achieve this. And once you wet the paper, the watercolor will basically run to where the water is. So you will see that it will start to drip and the, this these drips is what we want because this is the rain that we're going to add so if you see that nothing is dripping you need to add more water under the watercolors and onto the watercolors and just make it more fluid the more fluid it gets the better it will drip so you see that I keep on adding water to my brush and to the page and then the color starts to run. So just keep adding water and paint and create more and more drips along the entire page. And if you see that there are little pools at the end of your drippings, then simply just use a paper towel to wipe them out or soak them. So the more water you add, the more drops you'll get. And I'm using different colors so it will look more interesting and more realistic. And just go slowly until you are happy with the amount of little drops that you have on your page. Just keep adding the water and use the paper towel to absorb the excess water and drops. So I'm adding more layers of color for extra drops. Looks really cool. This is a really fun technique. And you can, since I'm doing rain, then obviously it drops from top to bottom. But you can use this technique for any other type of page. And you can make the drops go from bottom to top simply by turning your page around and doing this entire process when the page is upside down and then turn it back again and then you'll have 
this look of drops going from bottom to the top and it will look really interesting and original. So I'm going to add a little bit of white just to add extra dimension and layering in more shades of color. Maybe even a few more drops. So it's a process. You have to keep on working until you're happy with the result. Until you think that what you're doing is where you want it to be. So that's about our journaling that it sometimes takes time to reach exactly where you want to be and sometimes you don't even get there but once you're happy let it dry. I'm using a heat tool but if you don't have a heat tool to make sure it's dry then just leave it in the air until it's dry. Next I'm going to take very very little watercolor for the bottom of my page. You see that it's very very faint not bold. Just want a hint of color. I don't want to color the bottom of my page. So with watercolors you simply take a lot of water or very very little paint and then you can achieve this effect. So this is another technique for you to try in your art journaling. And by the way you don't have to work in your art journal. You can use water these watercolor techniques for any type of painting, card, scrapbook page, or just practice on a piece of paper. I'm doing it in our journal, but of course you don't have to. So now that I have the bottom painted, I'm going to let it dry or use a heat tool to dry. I'm going to make some splatter. This is another technique. Simply load your brush with a lot of water and then with a lot of paint and tap gently on the brush and then it will splatter like this. So you get little tiny dots of paint on your page and that looks really cool especially if you're making rain. So that adds to the effect. And another fun part about it is that you can't exactly control where the little droplets fall so that adds a little bit of a mystery to making this page. Again make sure that it's dry before you continue. It's very important to let it dry before you add another layer otherwise you get a lot of mess on your page. The next technique I want to show you is called pooling. We're going to create little tiny pools of paint by adding water and paint onto the page. I'm going to take this closer so you can see. So basically we're going to create little pools of paint by adding water to little drops of paint that we have on the page. And later when they are dry they're going to look really cool. So I'm just adding water around one dot with the tip of my brush and basically creating a pool of paint and water on my page. And then I can make it move a little bit to whatever direction I'm holding my page. The weight, the gravity, is going to make the water drop. So this pool can now be either a pool or a little drops of water like before. So just keep on adding water and make your pool larger if you want. And basically what we're doing is diluting the paint with more water and creating the pool. And of course before you continue to work on your page you need to dry everything. Okay so I'm going to dry 
my page. Again, if you don't have a heat tool, just leave it to dry like this. It will, of course, take you longer to make your page, but just adding some paint in the bottom. This is basically larger pooling. So this is a larger pool that I'm creating. Again, I'm loading my brush with water and then with paint and simply applying it to the bottom of my page. The more water and the more paint I load on my brush, the larger the pool will get. So the last thing I want to do before I continue is, of course, dry all of this so it will not smear and now I'm just going to use a stamp of a man with a, an umbrella and stamp a page so basically we had a few watercolor techniques here we had dro drippings or droplets we had splatter we had pooling we had circular motion to create clouds. We had a lot of fun techniques. And I'm just going to make it a little bit stronger because the, I think the ink is a little dry. So if something like this happens to you, you can simply take a pen and go around the outline of the image and make sure that it looks like you want it to. I'm also going to color it a little bit to make it a little more dark. But first I'm just going to go around with a black pen. Of course if you stamped it fine in the first time then you ha can skip this part altogether. But I really like that he's sort of a faint image on my page looks really cool I think I'm just going to take a little bit of black color and add a little bit of paint I'm not going to paint the entire image just a little tiny bit to make sure that it is visible so that's another technique coloring with watercolors so you had a lot of techniques here to practice with watercolors today on your art journal on just a uh, watercolor paper and scrapbook pages and cards and any type of surface that you want that you can work with watercolors so I'm also going to add some writing to my art journal page of course I always like to add a text or a quote or something I will have to go over that with a pen too. 